Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. And what we're gonna cover in this uh, video is we're gonna cover how to install Python 3 and Jupyter Notebooks on your computer, specifically on your MacBook. All right, so why do you wanna do this? Why does this matter? Essentially, Python 3 is the latest version of Python. You wanna use it, there's a lot of great things that it does, uh, string manipulation, things like that being one of them. Much better than Python 2, and obviously everyone's switching over to it eventually. And also Jupyter Notebooks is a very valuable thing for you to learn, especially if you want to get into data science or anything like that. It's really a must right now if you're a data science to use Jupyter Notebooks. It's very, very useful and a great way to, to also just get started programming, really. It's a great way to get started. So this video will explain all of that. If you want to get more videos like this, if you like this one, you want to get more, then you can check out the website as well, loomywealth.com, where basically we teach you about finance and coding together and a lot of the, the lectures are around Python. We have courses on there that are free. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. But what you could use is you could use the coupon YT25, which is gonna be in the description as well. And you can use that to get 25% off all the courses on the website. So check it out and I hope you enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome to the first lecture in this class. What we're going to be going over in this lecture is we're going to be talking about A, how to set up Python on your computer. This would be different based on Mac or Windows or Linux, depending on what your what system you're running. And then we're going to also be setting up Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter on your on your system as well, right? So we'll go over both of these. Um, let's get started with the first one, right? So first of all, what we want to do is we want to install Python three on your computer. There's a couple of reasons for this. So Python 3 is the latest and greatest of all the Pythons. There's Python 2, which is, you know, 2.1, 2.2, 2.7 is the most recent. They stopped making it after that. Now there's 3, there's 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, right? So when we're talking about Python 3, we're talking about pretty much anything in the, the range of 3. 3.4 all the way up until 3.8, I believe is the most recent right now, depending on when you're watching this, right? So... There's a lot of advantages between Python 3 and Python 2. I'm not going to go into all the details, but something that you really should know is Python 3 really makes data science, which is essentially what we're doing here, makes data science a lot better and a lot easier. Uh, there's a lot of things that are improved for string manipulation, for UTF-8 versus Unicode strings. There's a lot of things in Python 2 that... <laughs> Just, just waste a lot of time for no reason. Python 3 is really where you wanna be. So we're gonna get that set up for you guys. That being said, most of this code will probably, if you're a professional, if you really know what you're doing here, uh, most of this code will still work with Python 2. There might be some string manipulation things that do not work with Python 2, but for the most part, the code will still work. So um, I'm gonna to try to make it as backward compatible as possible, right? Okay, so let's jump into it. So let's set up Python 3 on your computer. Let's get this going. So depending on what system you're running, I have two links here for you in this. Uh, I've included this in a PDF for you to take a look at as well. For Windows and Linux, right, there's this link right here that we're gonna go to from realpython.com. They have a great guide here on how to install this on your computer. Basically on Windows, it's pretty simple. You're going to go to python.org. You're going to download essentially an installer. There's a specifically telling you to check off one thing here when you're going through the installer. But other than that, pretty much just go through the whole process. Install now should be very simple. Um, this might take you a little bit of time to download and install, but um, pretty straightforward process. For Linux, uh, depending on the flavor that you have, you know, Ubuntu, um, Debian, depending on what you're running, there's different ways of installing it for each one, right? I'm assuming if you have Linux or you're running some flavor of Linux or Unix, then you should know how to do this stuff. It should be pretty familiar to you. Then on a Mac, it's a little bit more complicated, right? Um, it's not the same as Windows. In this guide, they go over Mac OS and they talk about installing Homebrew, which involves basically installing Xcode and then installing Homebrew and then installing Python from that. That is the ideal way of doing it. And 
you know, if you understand computers well enough, would definitely recommend following that. But I've included another guide here for those of you that maybe are less familiar with this sort of thing, just to make your lives a little bit easier. So this guy, the second one from uh, saintlad.com, they have two different ways to do it. They have a simple way, which if you're not very familiar with uh, how your computer works or specifically how to work with terminal and things like that, this is the simplest way for you to use. It's basically the same as Windows. You download the package and then you go through and just hit continue and, and it will install it for you. If you're you know, if you're having any hesitation, just go ahead and do this. This will cause potentially some problems down the line. It's definitely preferred to do it the homebrew method. However, again, this is simple. It'll get you up and running. For the most part, you're not going to be too worried about the differences, but definitely doing it the homebrew way can save you some pain down the line, right? So, um,. Right, so this shows you both options here. Right, so we have installed Python using Homebrew, and then we have installed using the installer. Right, so pick one of these methods, go through it. Um, just to show you, this is the python.org page. All right, and you can just do the download. I'd recommend just doing it this way. It's it's simple, get you up and running. Um, you know, unless you're a little bit more computer savvy, uh, if you've worked with other programming languages in the past before, then. Uh, feel free to go for using homebrew and if if you're familiar with it then you know homebrew is pretty straightforward you go through brew install python 3 and then you wait for it to install and there we go okay all right so now you can test what version of python you have we're going to be using terminal somewhat throughout this course you don't need to be too well versed in it but to show you kind of what we're talking about here so this is a terminal on a Mac. On Windows, it is called. There's a different ver There's a different name for it. Um, it's actually it shows you here somewhere. I forget the name of it, but um, kind of the same idea. Um, well, well, I'll bring this up again in, in a second once uh, there's another guide that kind of goes over this. But this is what it looks like on a Mac. Basically, you'll go Python. In this case, if you do Python. Uh, through homebrew you're going to get Python 3 is the way that you're going to type it in and you're going to go dash dash version and we're going to see what version of Python I'm running 3.7 so we'll see what you have and um, you know if it's 3.8 that's great if it's 3.6 that's fine as well right as long as we have some version of Python 3 right um, and for you for those of you that don't know how to open this up if you're on a Mac, you're gonna hit command and space at the same time. Type in terminal, okay? You're gonna have terminal pop up, click on that. That's just gonna launch this thing that we have right here, okay? This is very important for anyone who knows how to do any kind of coding in different languages. Terminal is very, very important. We're gonna be using this a few times throughout the course. I'm gonna to try to avoid this as much as possible so you don't have to learn an additional thing. But definitely, um, there's guides around the internet they could check out to learn a little bit about terminal um, you could do all sorts of things this is basically like ms dos if you guys <laughs> remember those days back back in the day in the 90s when computers before we had windows and all that um, ms dos was the way that we interacted with things it's basically you can type things you could type in like an echo which in this case says i say echo hello it shows hello back i can get everything that's in the directory there's a lot of different things you could do with terminal um, we're not going to get too much into this again uh, feel free to look this up definitely this is something that you would want to know if you're going to get deep into programming but we're going to try to I'm going to try to stay away from this as much as possible so you don't have to, a lot of things to learn okay? all right so now hopefully um, you have Python 3 installed feel free to pause the video go through it check out the guides if you have any questions or comments about it, please leave comments in the course. I'll get back to you as quickly as I possibly can to help you set all this up, all right? So once you have Python 3 set up, the next step is we want to set up Jupyter, all right? So now what is Jupyter? Why do we want to use this, all right? So first of all, Jupyter or IPython uh, is what it used to be called. 
is basically something that data scientists use across the world. This is probably one of the most common tools for people to use. And there's a lot of advantages to using Jupyter. Let's open up the website here and they talk about it on the website if you wanna see kind of details. But essentially what this is gonna do is, first of all, in terms of the course, it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or on a Windows or wherever else, it's, you're gonna see the same environment. So it's gonna be a lot easier for us to work together depending on what system you're on. That's first of all. Second of all, I can give you Jupyter Notebooks that have already pre-populated data. So it's a lot easier for you to get started with things and you can actually see the results that I got. So I'll make, that'll make things a little bit simpler on your end for, for learning about these things. And then also just in general for data scientists, it's, it's very, very helpful because when you're using something like a Jupyter, you can execute one line of code that may take a while to do something so for example, you're running machine learning or you're downloading some data from the internet that takes a while to do. If you're using Jupyter, you run that code once, it saves it in memory or saves it in the notebook. And that way you could run the second lines of code and you can experiment and try around, do a lot of different things and use that original data without having to rerun everything. This is gonna save you a lot of time, make your life a lot easier. So please go ahead, we'll, we'll, we'll install this uh, Jupyter and I'll show you exactly how to do that in just a second, All right? So this is basically a website, just so you can see what's happening here. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and install Jupyter, All right? So there's a link included there. Again, there's a PDF. So there's a few different ways to do this, just like there's a few different ways to install Python. There's always a multitude of ways to do things, but probably the simplest, and they go through this here, is using the Anaconda distribution. If you click on this link here, it's gonna give you essentially a file. You download this, it's a pretty big file. I believe it's 600 megabytes or 700 megabytes, right? Get the 3.7 version, the, the newest Python version. So 658 megabytes. Download that, install it on your computer. It's the same sort of thing. You just click continue, continue, continue. Most of the defaults should work for you. And this will install, this will install Jupyter as, long, as well as other things as well. Right, so it's, it is pretty big, but useful tools to have on your computer. So that's probably the simplest. Yeah, we'll install here it says Jupyter, Spider, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas. It installs a bunch of things. So, so it's, you know, train, you know, there's, there's a bunch of things involved here. So this, this is a good thing for you to have on your computer in general. But um, in order to uh, do this, if you don't want to download this huge distribution, or if you're a little bit more familiar with the way Python works and the way that, you know, terminal works and things like that. My favorite way of doing this is the simply these two lines here. You're gonna get the first line, put it into terminal. Basically what this is doing is, um, if you're familiar with what pip is, pip is basically a package manager for Python. What does that mean? It basically means that it can download different types of code, different libraries or different bundles of code to your, to your computer. We're gonna be using this a lot. I'll go through the details of what this means later on. But first thing you need to know is we're, we're gonna update pip, make sure we have the latest version, right? In my case, it's already updated, right? 19.3.1, right? So we run that first command. Then we run the second command here, Python 3-m pip install Jupyter, right? So there we go, go ahead. For me, it's already installed, so you see all these required requirement already satisfied. For you, you're gonna see a bunch of loading bars and things like that for the first time you install it. It might take some time. Feel free to pause the lecture for now. But once you're done with all that, please come back in here and then we'll, we'll continue on. All right, so hopefully you've had, you've installed Jupyter now. Once you have that installed, we're now going to run our first Jupyter Notebook, right? So basically what we want to do is, first of all, let's make sure we're in a folder where we want to be saving all these things. It's I think it's very important to stay organized whenever you're writing code. So let's pick a folder. I have a folder here created. Uh, as you can see, it's Udemy. Uh, Algo Trading is for this course. This is the folder I want to use. I have a bunch of things in here, right? 
So let's, so I'm going to use that. You feel free, go ahead, create whatever folder you want on Windows or on Mac, whatever you'd like to do. Um, nice little trick here on Mac that so that we can get into this folder is what we're going to do is we're going to go CD space, and then we're going to grab this folder, drag it into terminal, hit enter, and we're going to get into that folder there, right? So once you're in that folder, depending on if you're on a Windows or you're on a Mac, there's uh let's let's make sure we're in there first right so uh, again on on windows you're gonna be using command prompt right so if you don't have that loaded up yet please go ahead and load that up on windows you really didn't have to do that up until now on on the mac we're searching and we're typing in terminal that's what we want to use on windows we want to use command prompt and you can search for that in your in your windows button all right um maybe it's even useful here to how to open command prompt on Windows, All right? You could probably just Google that and it should be a pretty straightforward thing. Yeah, 11 ways to launch command prompt on Windows, right? Type command or command in the search field and press enter, click on command prompt shortcut. That's essentially what you're doing. On Mac, you're, you're hitting command and space, right? So once you have that open and you've gone to the right folder, now what we're going to do is we're going to la run this last command here, Jupyter Notebook. This is going to actually get a notebook started, right? So we're in the right folder, type in Jupyter Notebook, hit enter, and it's going to open up your web browser, and it's going to show you something like this, right? So you see Jupyter, top right hand corner, or top left hand corner. You're going to see all the files that are in that folder. In my case, I have quite a few different files. I've been experimenting in here for a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new notebook. So you're going to go top right, see new, under notebook, Python 3. Again, we're using Python 3. Click on that. And this is going to create a new Jupyter notebook for us. And now this is where we're going to be doing all our programming, right? This is um, essentially there's going to be cells and we're going to be able to type in different things. So if we see here, we go Python, or sorry, we're going to say print hello world. This is kind of essentially your first program. Hit run, and you see it prints out Hello World. I'll get into all the details behind this very soon. But there we go. That's uh, You have Python 3 installed. You have Jupyter installed. We've started up our first notebook. And I think we're, we're just about ready to get started with all the rest of these lectures. We're going to teach you, first of all, the basics of Python. If you're already familiar, feel free to skip past this entire section. If you're not familiar with Python, I'm going to be going through it pretty quickly. So in the next lecture, I'm going to actually tell you about the different resources there are to actually learn about Python. And I'm going to go through kind of the main things that we need to do first, right? So it's great. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Bye. This is brought to you by LumiWealth.com, where we teach you about finance, programming, and just in general, how to make money. So if you'd like to get 25% off our entire website, which has a ton of courses, a ton of like cool courses that you can learn about programming and finance, then what you're going to do is you're going to use uh, either the link in the description or you can use our promo code, which is LUMI25. That's L-U-M-I-2-5, just like Luminate or like Lumi Wealth, the name of our company. When you get there, there's going to be tons of great courses they can choose from about programming, about finance, and a lot of these courses are even free, so don't feel like you need to spend money. You have the 25% off if you need it, but feel free to get some of the free stuff as well. So check it out, lumiwealth.com. Thanks for listening.